Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, and by the way, Chelsea, you don't win games thanks to money. Yeah, you know what, like, them lot shouldn't be allowed to spend a lot of money, and the thing is, they spent over a billion on absolute shite, and they're still absolutely bad. That's the funny part of all this, and this is why I'm going to be up in every Chelsea fan's face right now. Especially that Astrid Vetbird, who looks like uh, Michaela Mudrick's twin separated at birth. It probably is because, I don't know, her, da her dad's probably slept around quite a bit, and that's probably the reason why he's pissed off and doesn't speak to her. Because he probably doesn't want to admit that Mudrick's a twin, except he's just got Jesus and like butterflies tattooed in his neck and all that stuff. But, you know, West Ham beating Chelsea. We've only lost once against them at home since 2017. And let's get into the serious stuff. It's my birthday. West Ham's won. I've got my cake, by the way. Eat right here. It's happy days today, people. Let's roll those starting titles. It has finished. West Ham United 3, Chelsea 1 at the London Stadium. This is a bloody big slice of cake, actually. The real big thing is at my brother's gaff still. But I'm having just the one slice. And it finished. West Ham United 3, Chelsea 1 anyway at the London Stadium. West Ham gets its first win of the season and is still officially unbeaten the first two games. As for Chelsea, it's not won yet under Mauricio Pochettino with one draw and one loss. When do you think the Pochettino outbanners are going to start? Should we play a little bingo on that? I reckon about November at this rate. And let's be real here. Chelsea looked lost in the middle. And despite us being down to 10 men, we held on and we got that out. We got that win. Any other time in the past, we would have bottled that. And we would have lost massively, but today we stuck to our own, we held our ground and we got that win. The midfield looks completely transformed. Seems to be a lot better without Rice in it for some reason. And we now have a lot of balance. We have every man fighting for his worth. And today, a lot of people stood out for me. Can't signal out one more than the other. So, with that said, let's get on to the team, shall we? For West Ham, Ariola was in goal, that which was uh, pleasing. We had so far Emerson as the full backs, Gerd Zuma as centre backs, so Zuma captaining again. There was Suchek and James Ward Prowse, who was getting his first start on his West Ham debut. Pekatar as 10, Ben Rama and Bowen, and Antonio up top. I had one doubt looking at that team list. I thought James Raw Prowse would be cooked, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like literally raw chicken, vegetables, and a bit of rice put in a wok and, you know, olive oil. He would have been cooked. Especially with Enzo Fernandez and all that lot in there. But he wasn't. And I'll explain why in a moment. Shall I put this cake down, actually? Because it's a bit distracting. Actually, no, I won't. So it's nice. Okay, I'll put it down. I'll leave that in a moment. It's getting a bit distracting when I'm trying to write the video. James Will Price had a very early corner in this game, and Bowen nearly got his head on it, but Sanchez was forced to punch it. Oh, you could see the deadly threat. When Will Price is taking the corners, more bodies are getting forward. And a lot more of our attacking minded players are getting closer to that goal. Bowen just had to get his head down on it, but Sanchez got there in time. A few moments later, Another corner from James Ward Prowse. Again, gets his head on it. 1 0 West Ham. Very well taken cross. First assist for the Hammers. Again, gets his head on it for the first goal of the season. Again, kind of disappointed me last week against Bournemouth in a game where I didn't think we played badly, but there were still a lot of players who looked a bit shaky, and Aguerd did not look shaky at all in this. Shortly after that, there was a penalty call with Nicholas Jackson causing problems with his pace. Seemed that he was fouled by Ariola, but it wasn't given as a penalty because he was um, he was offside. Which was um, fair enough. 
in my opinion. He just was going to cause problems, though. I think Emerson was going to get toasted by him, and we wouldn't be able to handle the pace. Jackson's pace again, just, I'll say it, ripping us a bit. Chelsea hammered on the door a lot, and they responded to being 1-0 down. Carney took that equaliser very well. Sutek's kind of blame because he didn't really get in front of him enough. And despite him being very tight in the box, he was able to curl it still. And uh, it was 1-1. Couldn't even blame that. That was coming so long. Although we weren't awful in the first half, a lot of our players went very quiet. Uh, ben Rama on the wing offered really nothing. A little bit of technical ability, but no real pace and threat. Antonio looked a bit quiet. Pakitar had one of his worst first halves in a long time in the sense he was just very quiet. He couldn't do much. And that was the issue there. No one tried to get the ball away from Chelsea, though. And as I said, Paqueta was disappointing me. I know he's just been down bookies and all that, and Betway has ratted him out. But still, man, you're, you're, just, you're still playing for West Ham, man. Still have your head in the game despite what's going on. We'll see what happens Monday. He had a concentration lapse, which was almost very bad. He tried. To, he thought the play had stopped and Chelsea ran in behind him. Thankfully, nothing came of it. Penalty came to Chelsea. Suchek fouled uh, someone in the box. Can't remember who it was now. It was, was it Sterling? No, it wasn't Sterling. Um, I think it was Jackson that he fouled. And it was a penalty. Warded. Enzo Fernandez stepped it up against Ariola. Ariola saves it. His first ever penalty save for West Ham. Ariola, by the way... It's gotten a lot better. He looks a lot more comfortable to be that starting goalkeeper right now. He made some big saves when it counted and commanded his box really well. There was a counter which resulted in Bryn Rahm just missing. Like he wasn't even there for it. And Fernandez was given so much space to move. And this was a different game for him because it's the first time I've ever actually seen Fernandez play in the 10 roll. It clearly doesn't work, but he was in that 10 roll. Wasn't benefiting him, but he had so much space to move around. I assumed he passed forward, and, we, and, our, and our midfield three were all in line, trying to stop the pass going forward. He was getting it out to the wings instead. Emerson was bodied by Sterling again. I would have gone to a five at the back, because Emerson just kept getting absolutely muddered all game. I would have taken him off, though. I would have taken Ben Rahmer off, surely. I would like to see an Alvarez on, possibly. Suchet made a few rash errors, but at least he was intercepting the ball a lot more. And I said, I've said i said it again, he's better without Declan Rice there because the attention's not on Rice anymore, it's on Suchek, and that's pleasing. Mudrik came on for Chelsea in the second half, basically the Astrid wet with tattoos or just looks like curtain from the Chernobyl curtain from this country. Ben Rama hit a cross goal with a one-on-one, -on -one, but he was offside. But it didn't matter because it was 2-1 to West Ham anyway. Mikel Antonio against the runner play. War Prowse with another assist. Two assists on his debut for JWP. Antonio takes this really well outside of the box. Fires it low into the left corner that Sanchez doesn't get to it. Someone in the crowd was actually shouting, don't shoot, but he did it. And I was thinking, oh, fair. And you could tell David Moyes wanted us to press more because we were getting that ball in there a lot more. We were getting in their faces a lot more. And that was pleasing to see. The only bit of disappointment was that we made it hard for ourselves when a geared got sent off. Double yellow. It was a stupid bloody foul, mind. And then we had to make a sub to bring on uh, Ogbonna. And Ben Rama came off. So we had to just bring a defensive reinforcement. I like Oggy a lot, but my God, he was going to get cooked if we didn't stick to our guns in this. Really, he was. We controlled the game a little bit more and calmed down. Uh, Fornos came on for Mikel Antonio and almost did the AZ goal late on where he went... Single-handedly and dribbled it through a few players' legs and slotted it past the keeper. He nearly did that, but Sanchez's foot got in the way. And Ariola had to save a deflected shot. Mudrik off target. Awful game from him. Casado then came on. The £150 million man who got built by Brighton comes on and then gives a penalty away by, foul by fouling in the box. I think it was Emerson that went down. Pakatar takes it. A little bit of a step, step, step. Smashes it in. 3-1. Game, set, match, done. Snap back to reality for Chelsea. But for West Ham, amazing three points. Here are my final observations on it. Our midfield looks complete with James Ward-Prowse and Alvarez. Complements our midfield nicely. Aguerd, solid. Zuma, solid. Ariola looks a top keeper right now as well. Uh, Paquetá still stuck to his professional self. Antonio got a goal, which is good to see. 
People complained about James Ward-Prowse a lot and saying that he would be shit or he's too old, but what the hell? That guy was on it today. He's going to transform our team. I'm still 28, so he's not old, you ageist pieces of crap. Don't be so rude about him like that. Don't disrespect my boy from the Solent. Alvarez came on for his debut as well in this game. And, by the way, he was all over Chelsea. He was literally up in everyone's face. He's like paparazzi, in it. You know what I'm saying? Up in everyone's face, snapping them cameras everywhere. Oh my God, he was everywhere today. That guy looks an animal. I'm gonna. Alvarez is gonna be much loved at this rate, and I can tell it. We now just got to rest up for a week, and then we got to face uh, Brighton. Oh, yeah. Um, got to face Brighton next, haven't we? Um, oh. Let's just enjoy today, and then. Uh, See how we get on then. But have a good rest of your day, folks, and I'll enjoy the rest of my birthday.